Moses Black. Welcome back inside the Crazy Ant Farm, man. How are you? Man, I'm great. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're fantastic, man. Uh, you good, might man. have missed Thanks, your man. calling, my man. That might be where you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, I think you did, man. Oh, yeah. yeah. Steven, road, man. Steven Amell is calling right now for season three of Heels, dude, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, man, we are so super excited uh, to have you back on the show, man. You're always so much fun to talk to, you, and uh, it's you been sure. a while. You've been a busy guy, man. You did. I mean, what you had the five days of memorial, and you people, and you just all kinds of fun stuff going on while uh, in the in the gap before we talk to you, right? Yeah, man. Yeah, uh, yeah. I was traveling. At, I was going back and forth between New Orleans and Toronto for a while. Mm. Yeah, which was. Good. Toronto was still in part of the pandemic, uh, but they, they didn't they didn't act like it, you know. Uh, <laughs> I was like, hey, is this a pandemic up here or is this just Toronto? <laughs> right. You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they weren't acting like it, man. But it was it was fun to go to Toronto, man. And uh, the first time I went, it was it was warm. Mm. We went back to shoot, man. I think like August or something, and it was chilly and i was like wow well like how long does your you know summers last and they're right? like uh four weeks <laughs> <laughs> like they are there and gone in just a matter of seconds man yeah. that sucks yeah. a matter of seconds man, no doubt <laughs> yeah we're in new orleans it's 40 weeks it's yeah. like damn near the whole year <laughs> yeah yeah big difference yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why don't you come down here and enjoy some of this humidity? That's right. Yeah, you know, I'm like, nah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. But, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if you started getting more work in New Orleans because, I mean, you saw that Anthony Mackie's about to open up a studio down there, about to do a whole bunch of things. And I feel like, especially if you go on the uh, commission's website, Disney Plus is shooting a yeah. lot of stuff there right now, too. I just saw they did, like, the National Treasure series and yep. a couple of other things. Okay. So, I mean, it, it's cool to see, like, New Orleans is getting back into the game because, so for so long, right. Atlanta right. kind of took that space from them. Over. But it's cool to like yeah. have those uh, that availability for those actors to try to travel back and forth from those two hubs. So that's nice. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a there's a slight problem with production right now. Uh, it's called a strike is coming. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. So you know everybody's backing off the gas a little bit. You know. Uh, this is probably the slowest three months. I do voiceovers too, so it's not completely slow. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's in terms of in front of the camera, I've I've never been this slow before. You know what I mean? Yeah. Except coming out of the pandemic. You know, so yeah. it's an but, excellent yeah. point though, because it's you know it's affecting both film and and television side. People are nervous. You don't want right. to spend money if you don't know somebody's going to be there. Right? Yeah. You know I mean, you know, yeah, and get the stuff done. Yeah. And uh, so I mean, right. it makes sense, and and you know, it makes a lot of business sense for them. Unfortunately, for the people in front of the camera, it not so good, right? Yeah, I mean, you got to go these stretches. So um, yeah, it's very interesting because we uh, we read a statistic the other day, or like a week or two ago, that was like pre-pandemic. It was around like 150, 200 new shows that come out every single year, but now it's like skyrocketed. Yeah. We're like at 600 shows or something like that per year because of all the streaming services and everybody is just trying to stay relevant and what the crazy thing is it's all good content but at the same time there's just so much happening to where as a consumer you feel like you can't watch all of it and as a writer you don't feel like you're necessarily focusing on you know multiple different projects like you were able to before um so it's very interesting going from that like 21 to 24 season arc to like 10 episodes so yeah that i feel like that compensation needs to be there it's very interesting yeah, you know, especially, you know, I did a, well, the last time we talked, I had done a show in Mexico mm -hmm. for uh, Amazon Prime. Yeah. You know, great. You gave me all this this money for a month, but I you get to use my, you know, likeness for the rest of my life. Yeah, right. I, you know, I got a problem with that. I, you know, I turned 90 and I turned on the TV and it's still like the 40s me. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. I just like, I don't get paid for <laughs> that, that's that's right. right. That's right. Mm -hmm. And I, I, you know, I, I, with everything, right? We talk about it all the time. You know, there's always a good side and a bad side to any new innovation, right? Any new progress. Right. CGI is great. It, it does a lot of really wonderful stuff. But when you can take somebody and use their image forever and not pay them, that's not a good thing. And, that's not and, a good thing. And unfortunately, it seems that that's the direction a lot of these studios are headed. Like, hey, we need you to step in the semi, and we're going to take all these pictures of you from eight thousand 
thousand different ways, and we're gonna just put you in wherever we want to. And yeah, uh, yeah it's just kind of, I don't know, man. It's a, it's a difficult. It's great if you're, if you're not feeling so good, you're, yeah, a little hobbled, and you're like, can you touch me up right there? Perfect. Right, right, right. <laughs> you know? But, but yeah, I don't want to see myself you. exactly. But I don't want to see right, myself right. twenty years from now touched up. Like I want to just right. be me. So. Yeah, man, it, it, it's just it's crazy, but uh, but look, you like you said though, you you you're doing voiceover, and you know you got to find a way, right? The the industry <coughs> is constantly evolving, it's constantly changing, not always for the good, and you got to adapt. I mean, if you're gonna stay in this industry and you're gonna do what you do, you got to learn to adapt. You got to find ways to work. You got to find what you do. And uh, sure. I always think that you know the people that are innovative and roll with it and figure it out, you know, they, they're gonna survive. And and like you yeah. said, you, you you're surviving man you did you're doing what you got to do and yeah. uh so uh, you know i commend you on that because a lot of people would take that as i can't do this anymore i'm just it's too long a stretch it's going in a way i don't like it i'm just going back out and hit the road and and you know that's unfortunate that that a lot of good talent is probably doing that but you yeah. know we need people like yourself that that find a way to stay in there because we need people like you in it so yeah. i mean it, it's it's amazing man it, you know when i first started off it was just about getting one role. Mm -hmm. Right. And you were like, yeah, I got one. Oh, right, right. <laughs> there was, you know, hardly any like future thought to it. And now <clears throat> the one role or the 100 roles that I did don't matter anymore. Mm, yep. Right. That's it. it. it, it you you got to constantly be sort of like what you said, uh, evolving to the next, you know, verticality yep. you know i i did a uh and i do a lot of adr so but i did an adr for uh fast x hmm. the, the one that's coming out mm -hmm. the fast and furious and yet it's almost just like being in the movie really right it's, yeah it's same thing you know except you know i spend 30 minutes and, and you know and and get uh, some dollars and then they spent two or three months and make a whole bunch of dollars <laughs> exactly <laughs> <laughs> that's right that's right but you know yeah it's a good, it's an excellent point though, right? Like like if you have to go these stretches where you're not in front of the camera, but you can still do what you like to do and still make you pay the rent, then yeah. that's important, right? Like hey, I might only be getting a little bit of dollars, but I'm paying my rent. I'm doing what right. I like to do, and I'm gonna, right. I'm gonna find that gap in between these stretches of of in front of the camera stuff. And I mean that's you know got to do what you got to do. Got to do what you got to do, man. I want to be like Andre three thousand, just play the flute in the street of a. <laughs> Right, exactly, and every time he like appears from to the public eye, everybody's like, "Oh my gosh, look what he's wearing! Look what he's doing!" Yeah. Like all the different yeah. stuff. It's always so funny how the internet reacts when he actually pops back up. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, well, well, to prepare for the interview, you know, I went and did some research and was like, "All right, what's James been up to? Like, let's see what's uh, what's been going on." And I saw you did an interview recently, I think about a year ago, and you were talking a little bit about mental health, and yeah. mental health has become yeah. like a big thing for us as well we even started a whole different podcast about it um so during you know the pandemic that's when everybody kind of felt the effects of everything right they were mm -hmm. dealing with being isolated from everybody or they were dealing with you know not being able to uh you know just that touch that human touch that i feel like we all need for that that positive reinforcement to keep going so was mental health a big thing for you before the pandemic or did it kind of just enhance everything during the pandemic or talk a little bit about that you know i think one of the uh one of the scenarios or uh, examples that i brought out was mental health was like before the pandemic it was just sort of the bubbling under the surface right right, it, right. you know that's just a bubble exactly you know? it's gonna go away but when the pandemic hit all those bubbles became deadly gases mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh and so my thing with mental health began, I don't know, man, I think the first funeral I went to as a kid and I, I was just crying. And I didn't know why I was crying. And, you know, people didn't talk to me about it. Mm, you know, yeah. It was these issues and, and I carried it forward almost to the point that I don't go to funerals. Wow. But, you know, um, the biggest thing for me has always been to talk about it. Mm, Whatever right. it is you got to talk about it. and you also have to have i mean to me you, you sometimes you just can't talk to anybody because we're not all equipped to be 
psychiatrists or psychologists. Yeah, we're not equipped for that. That's right. But the point is to have a person who will just listen sometimes. You know, I, I would have, you know, when Twitch did that to himself, I, I, I was like, did he have anybody to talk to? You know, because I'm really particular about who I talk to, right? Mm -hmm. I, especially when I have some concerns about things, because some people will, you'll call them up and they'll railroad you, giving you their opinion. Right. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's not that you want their opinion; you just want to say, "Man, listen to this. This is crazy." Yep. And not that you you want them to be agreeable, but just to listen. So, to to me, mental health is. You know, before it got this name was was huge in my life, you mm -hmm. know, and I think that's probably why it brought me to the stage of entertainment uh, is because sometimes, you know, you just got to say what it is. Right. Yeah. You got to say what it is and you can't use words that you're not used to using. Uh, you got to say what comes off your chest, off your heart, you know, and it's not. I'm not talking about deplorable things. I'm not talking about things that cause other people pain or anything like that. I'm talking about your own wellness. Mm -hmm. and, and if you can't, if you can't, it's not meant, we don't put, some people try to put their wellness into layman's terms, mm -hmm. right? Something that someone can understand, basically. Right. You can't do that. You got to just say what it is instead of trying to think about how to say what it is. That's right. You That's know? right. You know, and you bring up good points, though, like, right, because it's it's a different time. And, and, and much like yourself, you were talking about, I had the same issue when I was young, funerals and crying my eyes out and everything. And back then it was a, it was a man up. Why are you crying? Get yeah. past it. Yeah. Move yeah. on. Right. Don't open up and talk about it. Don't ask why you're crying or feeling this way. Just man up and move on. And, right. and, and then, like you said, you end up carrying that forward and, and not getting away from that. And sometimes all it takes, like you said, is someone just to listen to you so that you know you are seen. You don't want them to say anything back to you. You don't want their opinions. You don't want their advice. You just need to know that someone sees you. And I right. think that's the difference, right? Like that sometimes that's a difference between what we saw tragically with, with Twitch and, and the people that get past it and get the help is that they see that somebody saw them. Right, right. And, and I, I think a lot of times, man, for me, you know, I've had a couple of suicides in the past couple of years, but... You know, I think the main thing that I felt guilty about, uh, and and and, and I, I went I went through some counseling. I felt guilty about not being able to help, mm. but I wasn't equipped to help. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So Absolutely. The, and 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 one of the things that this counselor told me, she said, you know, they were going to do what they were going to do regardless of you. Exactly. Regardless of what you said, and and I and I, you know, it helped me out. It helped me out a lot. But it's uh, we're not equipped. We think we're equipped. When someone says, you know, I'm about to take my life, I'm I'm out of here, and you go, get out of here, man. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Right. That's not what you you're really supposed to say. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we yeah. Say it because it's disbelief. Yeah. Like, oh, come on, man. You know? Yeah. You it's it's a difficult thing. It really is yeah. because, I mean, like like yourself, we have also experienced some of those uh, cases in our lifetime, especially during the pandemic and a little bit after the pandemic. So there's all these different things to where these people feel like, you know, they're in the shadows and nobody sees them. But, yeah, just having that conversation might help or, I mean, it might not. I mean, it's all – everything's reactionary and it's all about what they do and everybody's their own person. So it's all about continuing moving forward with your own life and trying to build yourself up in a sense of, you know, let me tell my story in the off chance right. that it might help somebody else. You right. know, um, so I think that's really what we've done with the podcast, too, is it's not about what you should do or what you shouldn't do. This is just what we've been through and right. how, you know, possibly somebody can connect to that and feel like they're not alone. Um, yeah. So it's that type of thing. And then my reference now, if I run into it, is like, man, you know, I it's it's always good to have an empathetic soul, you know, yeah. and to say, you know, I, I man, I. When, because here's the thing, man. Suicide is very. Uh, let me get this word right. Uh, 
uh, when something is, uh, oh God, um, if it's, oh, got it. So suicide is super contagious. Mm, yes. It's, it's super contagious because when it happens, it spreads this guilt. And then you start thinking about why did they do it? And then you start thinking about the circumstances, why they did it. And not that I'm saying that I would do it, but I start thinking like them. Mm, right. Yeah. Why did they do it? Why why couldn't they stop them? So I'm 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 starting to think, and I think that a lot of people don't realize how contagious uh, uh, suicide is because it is. It's because it makes you think of what they thought of. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And right. that's that's an excellent point. You know, you don't realize everybody thinks about the person that did it, but not the people that it affected and what it's done to them or what it continues to do to them. That's an excellent point. And yeah. uh, thank you for talking about this, you, you, you know, because I feel like sometimes that that is what's needed. Like you said, there was a stigma attached before. It was a bubble. Nobody wanted to touch it. Now that people at least feel comfortable enough to put it out there and talk about it a little bit, that helps. And if we can right. do that with our platform, that's awesome. So, um, but I, let, let's transition. Let's kind of bring this back a little bit because, you know, let's, let's talk about a guy with isolation and some issues, right? <laughs> oh, 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 Count Dracula there. You know? yeah, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, the new yeah. project you got coming out, of course, is, is Renfield. And, and this is an interesting take, right? It I is. mean, it's a comedic take on, on this legendary right. horror guy, right? But you, we're coming at it from his assistant, like, you don't understand. I've just got to get out of here after all this time, right? I I, yeah. I think it's a really good approach because there's been some hit and misses with Dracula over the over the past few years, and I think mm -hmm. this is a such a unique take on it that I think this spin is going to work, and I think it's going to work really well. Um, talk about your character because uh, I guess from what from everything that we're hearing, we don't want to throw out any kind of spoilers or whatever, but. Uh, He's basically decided that he's uh, had enough, and he's kind of fallen in love with a with a cop in New Orleans, and he's like, "This uh -huh. is my out." Uh, <laughs> but obviously, right, right, right. not going to go so well with Dracula. So, yeah. and you play a captain in the NOPD, and, and right. I'm assuming that's going to cause some friction because his, his, the love of his life is now a cop. Uh, right. so, <laughs> so, so my take is this, man. After 900 years of killing people. <laughs> I'm tired of it. Right. I want to be in love with somebody. Right? <laughs> Kill him and give him the you. I kind of want to love somebody. And that is the theme of the movie. I'm tired of killing. <laughs> I want to love now. Right? There you go. So for me, I play this cat. This is a notorious family in, uh, in Louisiana, New Orleans specifically. And they're all detangling. on. So I'm like sort of the uh, handyman for this family. Right? Ah, I, okay. I clean up their dirt, you know. I kind of counsel their crazy son, Ben Swartz. <laughs> and, then, uh, <laughs> and, then it go, and then it just goes awry, man. And, uh -huh. just, and somebody asked me, he says, so what did you have to balance? I said, first of all, <clears throat> I had to balance reality. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? This here's a Dracula. Yeah, <laughs> Dracula. Okay. <laughs> now, now we're gonna put him in a non-fictional city, New Orleans, and I'm gonna be this authoritarian person who happens to know Renfield, and who is happen to be he has to be funny. Mm -hmm. And I'm going. All right. Well. I'm gonna go ahead and pass on this movie, man. <laughs> Y'all can handle that, man. Right. So that was the balance: is bringing all these three things or four things together, and still sticking to the point that <clears throat> Dracula exists in 2023 or right. 2020. So, uh, but you know, they they put us. You know, my the team was uh, Nicholas Cage, Nicholas Holt, Aquafina, Ben Schwartz, Shorhe. Uh, Martinez and uh, and uh, Adrian Martinez and myself. So it was like a cast of characters, man. You right. Know? And once you put a bunch of improv and people around each other, watch out. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come out crazy. Oh, you know? for sure. 
For it sure. Came out, it came out crazy. But, you know, the, the movie seems to be, and it took takes me back to, you remember the, the old clips where people were at the movie theaters and it was a scary movie and everybody would go, oh, yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. That's what Renfield reminds me of. Oh, that's <laughs> that, fantastic. You know, yeah. that old throwback sort of uh, horror movie. But it's funny. Yeah, and and that's the unique twist on it, right? It's an old throwback horror movie that's going to give you jump scares, and you're going to be like, oh. right. but it's funny, and and that that's, right. I have to imagine what you just said though. I have to imagine that a set with Aquafina and and Nicolas Cage and and just like these people, how do you even get through that without busting up every single time? I feel like that had to have be the hardest thing had to have been probably just keeping a straight face trying to get straight through a scene, face. right? Like. Great face. That was the hardest <laughs> thing. And especially when, like, Ben Schwartz is a funny improv dude, man. Sure. I don't, I, I don't know if you know this cat, but this cat is funny. So some of the stuff that he was doing, I was just trying, I was just like, please don't laugh, James. Just don't, <laughs> don't be the one that laughs first, James. And then so it's my turn. And then I know I saw Aquafina break up a couple times. And and I saw Schwartz over there trying to hold it together. So it's this, this you you have to pass the laugh, you know, like right. okay, you know, you, you, okay, you made me laugh. Watch this, <laughs> <laughs> and then it was, you know, it was like, but it was it was fun, man. It was fun. I had fun. So fun. so were you guys able to? Do you think did a lot of that make it into the film? I'm hoping. I hope that they like some of the stuff that you ad libbed or some of that stuff that just kind of went off the rails a little bit. Did it make it in? Listen, if Ben Schwartz, some of the stuff he did made it in the film, I, I don't know what y'all going to call this film. Uh, I know. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. Just uh, I don't know what you're going to call this film uh, with some of the stuff he uh, did. All right. Okay. Fair enough. <laughs> you know, We're going to need a copy of the outtakes, James. Right? Right? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. That's so funny. I, I, it, man, I, I know this did make it into the scene, probably for some other reasons, but... So there was an arrest in the station. Swartz is going crazy, going through, and he grabs this girl. Like he, oh, he's, I'm gonna do this girl. And I said, "That's a man." Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh yeah. nuclear explosion, bro! Oh my god! Explosion. <laughs> and, the, and, and it was so funny, man. Everybody was trying to hold it together. And then they said, okay, cut. And the girl said, I'm not a man. I was like, I know. I'm just, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> He's just trying, to, just trying to add a yeah. little bit of something. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is so. hilarious. And what we've been doing yeah. on the show, and I feel like this was a really fun set. Something had to have happened. What we've been doing on the show is, you know, is there like an embarrassing story by you or anybody else on set that happened while you were there and in the middle of it that y'all can talk about now and just kind of sit back and laugh about? Um, yeah, no, man. No, everybody had their own Id idiosyncrasies, you know? <laughs> so that was weird in itself. In itself, right, yeah, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the crazy thing is that we filmed during Mardi Gras. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, which was, you know, not cool. Yeah, not cool. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, they were we're on the we're in the van or whatever coming back and and they had a police shortage also. Oh, so I they can had imagine. To the routes. And they're like, I'm I'm, you know, maybe two blocks, three blocks from the hotel during Mardi Gras, which is pretty much from here to Calabasas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so during true. Mardi Gras. Right? Especially oh, there, yeah. yeah. You ain't going nowhere. No. And like, we can't get any closer, James. Can, do, do you want to get out? I'm like, what? <laughs> oh. No, I do <laughs> not. Yeah. <laughs> I want to get out, man. <laughs> you know? No, I don't want to. Take me back to base camp, man. I'll spend the night over there, man. Right. But, it was uh, it was just Mardi Gras. Like the timing of it was crazy, man. Because Mardi Gras was again seven what, it was seven days in a row. Or something yeah, like yeah. Days. And it was every day. Every day we're like, okay, well, well, we're not going to shoot today because we got the uh, whatever the, the 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 you know the the things coming past. Yeah, right. And and uh, so for me, it was kind of like a mini uh, horror vacation. <laughs> <laughs> 
So, <laughs> well, yeah, you know, it's funny that that you bring all that up because that's a that's a good set because I feel like the city of New Orleans itself is a character, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, you, you know, that the the culture there, the people there, that in itself is a character in the film that you've got to and like you said, have to try to deal with whether it's right. a part of the film or not, right? Sometimes right. I feel like the the culture and the people and and all the great things about New Orleans, but then there's the flip side of that going. Ooh, that's a whole lot of New Orleans. And if you're not prepared for that, right, you're like, this is just so out of my league here that I can't deal with this. And, and even more so during New, uh, Mardi Gras. I mean, that, that's a beast in itself. And I can't even imagine trying to, you see it all the time in movies and TV where they, recreate Mardi Gras yeah. and it's like that's not how it goes yeah. <laughs> that's not how it actually is and like yeah that's some good when you stuff re- when you recreate Mardi Gras somebody dies yeah <laughs> exactly that's right exactly. that's exactly right oh it's my too goodness. much liquor too much gowns and too many bees <laughs> oh my goodness it's crazy too because I don't know if you know I don't know if we told you but we are originally from down in that area so we experienced Mardi Gras a lot oh yeah and like the cleanup alone on that thing, it takes about a month or two just to get all yeah. the beads out of the trees, out of the balconies, out of the right. streets and the gutters. Right. It is absolutely wild. But man, yeah. if you remember it just a tiny bit, I'm sure that you'll have some stories. That's for sure. <laughs> oh, dude, I, I totally remember it. I totally remember it. Yeah. That's, uh, so, I mean, well, it sounds like, though, you, you know, it was a mixed bag while shooting and everything. But I, I, I honestly think, though, like we said, the premise of this film and the cast that you guys were able to pull together and the whole thing, I think this is going to do really well. I think this is a kind of film where we all kind of need it right now. There's so much other shit going on that a good laugh, good, just get, getting away a little bit and having a good laugh, I think is going to be a really good thing. Yeah, and I like I said, I don't usually do. I mean, I love comedy. It's comedy is one of my things that I thrive at. Uh, but the opportunity to do it without it being slapstick, right, is the thing that I try to avoid. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to get any. But smart comedy, I'm with. Man. That's there right. That's right. I'm with smart, and I, I do it really well. So maybe this will catapult me into. Oh, I didn't know James because I hear this all the time. Yeah. Uh, Oh, I know. I didn't know James does did comedy, and I'm like, yeah, okay, sure, <laughs> right. <laughs> Just sit back and watch. Just sit back and yeah. watch. <laughs> I mean, you you know, you are a little bit of an imposing man, so I mean, uh, you know, I... <laughs> hey man, but you know, imagine imposing and funny at the same time. Exactly, you know? <laughs> that's what I'm saying. You know, you gotta you gotta know that people aren't always what they. You can't judge it just by the cover. Like this man is yeah, funny man. as shit. <laughs> like you know, I'm, I'm a funny dude, especially that's... when I go from serious to like. I'm just joking. Like, if I go like, God, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> we we thought you did that just a minute ago because that we were like, wow, is he is he is is he still for a reason or like what's going on? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's so funny. Well, listen, man, thank you so much for coming on and getting a little crazy Thanks with for having us. Me we again, appreciate man. you yeah. appreciate always. It, and uh, have a fabulous year. Let me know what you think of the movie. I'll come back on and do one, you know? Hell yeah, course, man, of for sure. Course. Anytime, anytime. We'll be in uh, contact. And you just okay. have a great rest of your day, man. Both of you. See ya. All right. All right Take man. care, man. Bye. See ya. All right. All right, just another fun interview with a return guest, and man, this guy is so easy to talk to always. Always. Every time he comes on, he's really fun. We have such a great time with him. He just, he gets it. He yeah. get he gets, and I'm so glad because, right, we don't, you don't necessarily think of James Moses Black as comic, right? Yeah. You also don't think, hey, we're going to dive deep into some mental health and talk yeah, about suicide deep, and stuff man. like that. And it got a little deep there. Yeah. And so I, I just love guests who have range and who are, you can tell they're just people. And we all go through some stuff and we all can have good times, but we all got some other times and we got to, and it's it's good to have conversations like that. Oh, most definitely. And what he was saying there at the end, you know, him being such a, you know, a vast difference between comedy and uh, drama. If you go back to This Is Us when he was playing that reverend, I mean, all all the scenes that he was he was in they will make you cry so <laughs> he is really good at being very versatile so it's awesome to see it's awesome to know him and awesome to you know just keep bringing these guests back on because they're doing some great projects oh, absolutely, absolutely. Thank, thank you again james moses black for coming on the show 